guys and welcome back to my channel travel again let's understand how we can configure manual NAT uh, basically uh, there are three types of NAT in the checkpoint world uh, one is your static NAT one is your hide NAT and one is your manual NAT So static NAT and hide NAT uh, is sort of easy to configure because checkpoint give you flexibility to configure automatic NAT and within a single click you can configure the static or hide NAT from the object. But manual NAT is something which you need to you know uh, write the policy. And you need to define the logic for it. So let's see. Consider one scenario. So simple scenario we'll see. I have a gateway and I want to access uh, say uh, Google DNS server. So one way I will configure manual NAT is say I have a 10 PC uh, 1 1.1 to 192 or 1 1.10 to or you can say 1.20 to 192, 168, 1.30. I have these pieces, uh, this uh, endpoints, and they are going to the outside world to access, uh, say, this web server, which is Google Web Server. And uh, I have a public IP addresses, and I have I have say around ten public IP address available with me. And due to that, I have decided to create a NAT in uh, for this internal IP address with ten public IP address, so that I'll be having a better security. So that what uh, I have decided, okay, for this 10 IP address, I will create a range for 10 public IP addresses, which say, consider these are the public IP addresses, 192, 168, uh, from say, uh, four, uh, I mean, 192, 168, 1 .40, to 192, 168, 1 1.50. So my uh, scenario is whenever the IP from 192, 168, 1.20230 will go to the outside internet or outside world, it should take the IP from 192, 168, 1.4250 in between whatever the IP will assign it should take that IP address uh, that is uh, one requirement I have here and second requirement what I have let's say I have this gateway and I am coming from outside so I have say one PC here. Uh, this PC want to access some internal server. So I have given him IP address 192.168.1.21, uh, and he is going to access IP address 192.168.1.100, uh, for example. So I will do again a manual NAT 
here to do the you know outside to inside access and here I will try to provide say I want to access this uh, internal IP address uh, we can give it a port but this will be the example of the static net you also configure the static net for this way but we'll try to configure a manual net for that manual net as I said is nothing but the the arrangement what you do you know you are not using a feature called automatic net so the manual net gives you flexibility to define your rules as per your requirement okay so let's start with the first scenario uh, let me create uh, one IP address range so I go to the object object explorer and if I I'll see if I have the IP address range already present so I wanted to do 192 168 1.20 Okay, so I can see I have already one object created here. I'll just change the name IP range 20 to 30. So range is already there, and if you see, I have not selected any NAT here. And this is how where you can do the automatic NAT. So let it be like that. And I will create one more range uh, for the uh, my netting IP addresses for the public IP addresses. So go to the object explorer, then network objects, and give it a say public range. Say you have 40 to 50, and I'll give it an IP address say 192. 160 at 1.40 uh, okay the 40 is the first IP address and 192 168 1.50 will be the last IP addresses and if you see there is a no NAT I have configured okay so uh, what error is that IP network mark does not match the IP network mark. One I do Oh, so sorry. Actually, I want to create a range. Uh, I have select the wrong object. So uh, come to the network object, and here there is address range object. Uh, you have to select that. So. Uh, public range 40 to 50 and uh, give it a range 192 168 1 dot say 40 to 192 168 1 dot 50 okay that's it now you have to configure the NAT for it. This is a kind of uh, NAT where uh, you are, you know, applying some sort of hide NAT feature. So at the bottom you are seeing manual NAT. Come here, add one rule to below this, and say uh, <coughs> public access to internal servers that is a name then define your original source so let me have these IP addresses here original destination I want to go anywhere uh, original service if you want to define you can define for now I'm just keeping any translation 
So my source should be get translated to this IP addresses, which is 40 and 50 range, and translated services will be any installation target will be any. Let me publish this. Let me install the policy. <coughs> what policy get installed? Let's get go to the uh, Windows Server and let me log in. Let me check my IP address, IP config. So I have an IP address 192.168.1.21. Let me see if the policy is get installed. Policy failed. Invalid any in original destination of NAT rule 1, any is valid only if the matching translate column is original. Let me see number 1. So, translated source. So, this is what the source. Original destination is any, original service is any. Okay, I have put it into the wrong column. We want it to be on to the translated source because we are translating the source itself. Let me delete this. And now let me install the policy. When policies get installed, let's check the security rules if we have to allow this communication to the outside world. So it says, okay. So I, I can see rule six is allowing this communication. And now policies got installed. Let's go to uh, this server. And let's just try to do the HTTPS to the uh, anything like uh, say any site and let's see uh, what natting we see there. This will not work here because uh, uh, we don't have a public IP address but uh, the packet will load. So. Let me see how it goes. So, let's see. So, there is no internet message comes because of we don't have the proper uh, public IP address, but let's go to the logs and monitoring and we'll see uh, if there is a conversion happen. So uh, this is the IP address and let's see the packet from today. Let 
see this is the latest packet and uh, if you notice on this packet the natting so as the given range the nat is happen 192.168.1.41 and it says natural one and <clears throat> This was my source IP address. We use DNS service. It's going to ETS0 from this IP address. So, I mean, this is what the destination is. And this is what the netting happened. So, uh, Let's see for the same packet how the uh, AWW monitor uh, give me the output. Okay, let me log into the security gateway. Uh, CPHA props that. So right now, local gateway is the active one. So let me clear it. And let's do this. FW monitor dash E. And let's, first let's see if we have FW uh, as a wish and enable, I mean, a secret Excel enable. So right now I can see uh, Secure Excel status is disabled. Uh, if you see here, yeah. so Secure Excel status need to be disabled uh, when you are performing uh, the AWB monitor for the better output. Let me clear the screen. Let's do with this AWB monitor. E, let's uh, accept. Uh, what are the packet coming from this source 192.168.1.21 uh, and port equal to or service equal to a port equal to 53 let me say this works okay Command is not correct. Okay. Okay. So it should be something like this. Okay. Let me clear the screen. Let me run this. Let's see uh, if we can generate some packets and see what output we get. Let me go back here and try to reach this side. Okay, so we can see the packets are communicating. Uh, let's do the TCP dump. 
from the ETS zero where source source is equal to 192, 168.1.21 and destination port or simply a port equal to 53. Okay, syntax error. TCP down. ETS one. Source source equal equal to. Instead of all, just put it like a source. Then syntax else. Which is done by ETS0 is the interface. Uh, source. Instead of source, do it like post. Equal to and post. Okay. So if you know these things happens, if you don't know the syntax, uh, you have a some important site to generate those syntax. So this is the site I usually give it to my uh, subscriber that go ahead and you know do that. So here you just have to put it. See uh, what interface you are going uh, going for. Then source destination source is your 192 168 1 1.21 and add a filter below and you are looking for the port uh, so the port which you are is interested in is layer 3 port which is your destination only which you're talking about 53 so let's copy the syntax and press into this let me clear up the screen So instead of net, I think I have to be source. Let's see if this works. Okay, it's getting worked. Now let's go back and try to generate some traffic to see if we get some packets there. So yes, we are getting some packet. And this is how the communication is happening for the NAT. Okay. Now let's do one more thing. Uh, let's capture this packet to a file called manual.pcap. What is the syntax? Uh, That's it, I guess. All right. Uh, let's try to generate the traffic again. Let's 
simple racket. So it says 28th packet got received. Uh, let's do one more thing. Let's do the uh, FW monitor. Capture uh, this output to file say manual one dot pcap and let's run it again so some packets got captured let me stop the communication let's do one more thing here change spell bin bash admin let me take a win scb and capture this packet back to the my machine i mean capture this uh, uh, files back to my machine it's 192.168.1.111 username password so these are the two files present so we are copying it to the checkpoint training and say SAP info files. Let's get it this file from there. Let me quickly open the uh, the Wireshark. Okay, let me go back to these files. So those files are at the location, checkpoint training, pick up files, and there is something called well where was the files? Okay, see pin for file manual and manual so manual we have done for the tcp dump so let me open that file into the wireshack and let's see uh, what is the packet flow so here i am seeing uh, all the dns packets so let's say for example this packet 182.161.21 is trying to reach 182.42.93.30 <clears throat> and let's see what we can see here So port 33 is in use. So the site name is there. So whatever the uh, packets communicated, the traffic is getting captured for it, right? But uh, I don't see the NATED IP address in this captures. I believe this is because of uh, uh, we have used whatever the IP addresses. Uh, those are not in the range. 
of public IP address. So let's now quickly look into the FW monitor capture as well. Let's see if we can look at that IP address here. So if you see uh, the important thing here, so you are seeing all this uh, interception point. So packet, for example, consider this packet flow. So when packet hit to the firewall and passes policy, it gives you I small i once the routing happens uh, packet reach to the external interface you will get this big eye and then once netting happens uh, it will give you small o and then once it goes out it will be a big o but in our case it's not going out Also, I'm thinking we have used the same uh, subnet IP for netting. Maybe that's the reason uh, we are not observing netted IP. We can quickly do uh, checks and we can change this uh, IP range to some other IP range for example let's go back to the security policy of NAT and here I have used public IP range I will change that let me get out I mean get delete that range and create a new uh, network range uh, so this is only possible from here. So let it do it from here. Network. Okay, sorry. More object type. Range. Where is the range? Network object. Address range. New range. Just go for the range of public IP address, which is 10.1.1.10 to 20. I'm sorry. 10.1.1.10, the first IP address, and 10.1.1.20 last IP address let's have that here and let's publish and install the policy to see if we can see the latest changes policy installation failed let me see the reason IPS IPS update failed, that is fine.
so the policy got installed let me go ahead and uh, regenerate the traffic to see what difference we get here so I have just generated traffic let's go to the logs So if you see the uh, IP got change here, let's see if uh, same we can witness uh, with the FW model and TCP dump station. Let me run the FW monitor command. FW monitor. Let's go ahead and run the, I mean, reproduce the issue. Let's see this time what we get. Still, I'm not seeing uh, the conversion here. It's just giving me the, whatever the communication is happening between the source and destination but I I expected that some that changes we can see on the blue monitor as well I don't know this is the word the drawback or uh, some uh, issue but let's now do the same thing the TCP dump TCP dump I get zero so we can give it 192.168.1.101 and destination port we can give it 53. Let's reproduce the issue again. Oh, so sorry. I have given a wrong source. I have to give source as 21. So as you can notice, we are getting some packets here. But again, I don't see the natting part. Of course, TCP number will not give you that. But anyhow, uh, the communication is happening. And in logs, we see the changes. I mean, if you notice, the packet is getting translated. So this is a, a small demo, a simple demo with trial and errors. Uh, 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 what I did for the you know manual NAT uh, demonstration. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching this video guys and have a wonderful day.